I want to share with you some things about the icons, as I said. As I began to hear which ones they were choosing, that St. John the Baptist, who is nearest to me, that John would have to be near to Christ. And that was obvious. I knew that right away. John is the precursor. He, is the, he announces the word. So he needed to be this side. So then at the, at the other end, um, which I really guess I think of as the beginning, um, is St. Michael the Archangel. And I felt that Michael and John the Baptist kind of pair, um, they so, sort of framing the seven, because uh, both of them point out God. Now all the saints point out God, of course, but I think that in the earthly realm, John the Baptist, and in the heavenly realm, St. Michael the Archangel, both point out God in a very particular way. There's a line of um, attributed with St. Michael is saying, who is like unto God? So I thought that, and then, but there's two other reasons for Michael at the front, and um, there's chronology, the angels come first. And then also Michael, the great archangel, as the defender, defender of the faith. And um, so sort of, I think, you know, being at the, at the front, at the perimeter of the church, and, um, and uh, kind of a guardian over the other saints. Now, um, the, the two that come next from Michael in, there's a mini chronology. The first one is St. Teresa of Avila, and the next one is St. Philip Neri. So Philip um, and Teresa chronologically are close to each other and also canonized at the same time. Teresa of Avila was one of the great mystics of the church. She's also one of the, I think, 34 doctors of the church. And um, she wrote great mystical writings. So I felt that she, in proximity to Michael the Archangel, Michael is in heaven, and she wrote great mystical, uh, deep theology. Philip Neri, next to her, was also very mystical, but he was also very earthly. He was known for his joy, for his cheerfulness, and for his sense of humor. This is the reason I like him so much, and that's the icon that I sponsored. Um, I'd like to, I'd like to draw from his not. I don't think I can get to his mysticism. I'd like to draw from his cheerfulness. He. Um, this is the reason. If you look at the icon of Philip, she, Nancy, the artist, put in two books. He's got he's resting with two books, the Bible, and another one which is, it says on the spine, Book of Jokes. Right. Now, there's more to this. It's said that he, um, prior to Mass, most of us should say some prayers to get our minds and hearts ready. Uh, Philip had a problem. When he was in Mass, he got so deeply into the prayer that he would lose, um, he, wouldn't, he, would, he would sort of stop at times. And, of course, the people that were there need Mass to keep going. <laughs> and so he would... He would have somebody before Mass read to him from a book of jokes so that he would be distracted so that he could just go through the Mass and complete it without going into flights of ecstasy. So um, now there's something else on that icon that you have to go up and look very carefully to try and find. It was a little thing that I asked the artist to include for me, okay, so I won't tell you. Now in the middle is... Um, two of our very recently canonized saints, and that is Saints Francisco and Jacinta, who, brother and sister, along with Lucia, their cousin, were seers at Fatima. And um, I, I intentionally wanted them in the middle because Jesus says that um, we must become like children to enter the kingdom. So they, I thought, should be at the center. Also, that there's two of them on that icon, it um, kind of makes sense that way as well. Now, Philip, because of his cheerfulness, he was 
very close to children. So he is there, um, they, 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 he's near them. And on the other side, we all know that Mother Teresa loved children as well. So Mother Teresa comes next. Mother Teresa and um, the next one, St. Josephine Bakita, they are kind of another mini chronology. They're fairly close to each other. They're more contemporary saints. St. Josephine Bakita, she's probably the, the, the least known up there, but more known um, as time goes by. She is um, from Sudan. Most of her life she was a slave. And that's why in the icon she's shown with broken chains on her wrists. She um, um, ultimately was bought and given her freedom and became a religious sister and was very, very loved. Her story is a painful story, of course, but it's also one of remarkable mercy because there's a story attributed to her that somebody once asked her what she would do, what she would say if she ever met her, uh, her captors previously. And she said, I would kiss their hands. I also thought that she sort of paired well with John the Baptist because of their kind of, um, the, the strength of sacrifice, I guess, is what I'm comparing them to each other. So that's, that's my thoughts on the order of the saints. I really believe that these, this addition to the church is going to assist our prayer. I know that it will for me. God made us as sensory beings. So all of these things, part of our liturgy, all of the sensory aspects of our liturgy are meant to pair with our soul. The body pairs with the soul in prayer. The most important um, places of the church are here, where the Word of God is, the altar, where the sacrifice is represented to us, and the tabernacle, where Christ is present. And then, all of you. All of you here, in prayer together, each week. And your brothers and sisters around you, all of us made the image and likeness of God, who bring about the prayer that we share with each other.